In my last video, I showed how to program a disk browsing tool using C Sharp. In this lesson, I'll extend my disk browser so that it shows some file information and icons for applications and for documents. And it will also let you double click a file name to run a program or load up a document. If you haven't watched the last video, go and watch it now. This is the disk browser I programmed. So this is the program as I left it, the disk browser as I left it in the last lesson. And you can see that I've got this list view here with only a file name column. Now I need some other columns for more information to save time. I've already set that up in a new project. Let me show you. So I click the design. You can see I've got these extra columns. That was quite easy to do. I just click the list view, go down into properties down here, select columns. That's a collection. I showed how to do this in the previous video. I've just added some more columns. So I've just added columns uh, two, three, and four. And number two is going to be the size of the file. Three is the date modified. Four will be the attributes. So once you've set those columns up, you're ready to continue. Now, let me quickly turn back to the previous version of my code. And look at this uh, function here, this method, show file names. Now, let me quickly explain what's going on here. It populates the list view with the file names in a directory. It creates a directory info object, and directory info is a class applied by .NET. And the new object here is based on the path that is the directory given by the selected node of the tree view. So here I declare an array of file info objects where file info is another .NET class. And remember, you can find, you can find detailed information of those classes just by highlighting them in your um, in Visual Studio and pressing F1 to pop up some information. When a new directory is selected in my tree view, this method uh, first clears the file names from the list view. It then checks that the newly selected directory actually exists. And if it does, it populates my file info array with file info objects, which are returned by the get files method of the directory info object DEI. Each file info object supplies information about one of the files in the directory. Currently, I just get the name of each file uh, name and add it to the list view. Now, in my new version of this code, which I've rewritten here, I want to display some more information than I have previously, namely the date when the file was last modified, its size and its attributes. I've already added columns in the list view to show that information, so I now need to add some code to populate those columns. And here I've done that already in the show file names method. This uh, for each loop you can see here, uh, that adds a new file name for each file found. And then it also adds uh, extra information down here on length, last, right, time, and attributes. Now, here name is a string property, whereas the size goes in the additional column after the one that shows the file name. I add the size using the items sub items sub items add uh, method. You can see I've done that with all of these three columns down here. And here, length is a long integer, so I convert it first to a string. You can see that here, and append uh, the, the string bytes to it. Then I add the last write time in the next column that's here, and that's the next uh, sub item of the uh, list in my list view. Remember, you can find all information on all the properties and methods available to file info in the online documentation. Displaying the file attributes takes a bit more work on my part. You can see here, this is where I display file attributes. Um, so this is because file attributes is an enumerated type and I want a one letter code for each attribute. That is, I want to display one letter uh, in the uh, column, H for hidden and so on. And I want to be able to dis display multiple attributes one after the other. Now let's have a look at the getats method. If I find it up here, this is when I've written to get those attributes. So 
I've written this method to find the attributes and um, build up that string of single uh, characters to dis to represent the attributes. Now this uses here, you can see this ampersand here, this uses the logical AND operator to, to determine if the specified value such as hidden or read only is found in the attributes property. And if so, I add the appropriate letter to the string that I'm building up. And then I call this method, as I've shown before, I call this getAts method down here. Now, one last thing I want to do is to display the icon associated with each application or document. To save time, I've gone ahead and rewritten my code to implement that, and you can see that already in this new version of the code. It's actually pretty straightforward. I've added an image list. Now, let's have a look where that is. So right up here at the top of the class, I've added image list, image list one. So I've declared it up here and down in show file names, I've actually created that new image list, the new image list object. And I assign it to list view uh, one dot small image list, as you can see down here. And that's the image list associated with the list view component. Now this for each loop, you can see down here, uh, builds the list of icon images for the files. I declare an icon, icon for file, and I initialize it by default with the systems icons dot win logo, the Windows logo that will be displayed if nothing else is uh, available for a file or, or for a program. Now, this is provided as a property of the system icons.class. I then test if the images collection of the image list has a key. So you can see down here, this is where I'm doing the testing. Um, that's a, a lookup value. The key is a lookup value that matches the file extension. Each file's extension is associated with a key that can be used to define its icon. So the images collection will contain a key if an icon for this type of file has already been added to the collection, the images collection. That is, if I've already added this particular icon for some other file that I've already displayed in the list view. For example, if I've already displayed a Word document in the list view, I'll already have a Word icon in the images collection. If, however, this is the first time I've added details about a file of this type to the list view, well, its icon won't yet be in the images collection, in which case I get the icon using the extract associated icon method, passing to it the full path of the file name. Windows and .NET then do the hard work for me of actually getting the icon image, and I assign it to icon for file, and you can see that's what I've done here. And I add the new icon image to my images collection. And when I add it, the file extension acts as the key, the lookup key, and the icon itself is the, the value that's associated with that, and that lets me get an icon using the key uh, when I need it. And that's all that's needed to get the icon to be displayed before the file name. Let's, let's just see this in action, so I'll run it. And here you can see that, um, let's find some more interesting icons. So if I go down into, let's go down here. So you can see here, I've got various icons uh, preceding the, the file name. And these icons are the ones that are associated with those file names. Now, all that remains for me to do is to launch a program or load a file when its name is double clicked in the list view. Right here, for example, I've navigated down to some music files. And let's just say that I want to load one of these MP3s. Well, I want to double click it to get it to load automatically into the associated application. Let's give it a try now. And up it pops and starts playing. Well, I'm going to stop this now because 
I don't want to be on the wrong side of YouTube's copyright uh, infringement rules, but that's essentially uh, what I what you want to happen in, in any sort of disk browser or file manager. And indeed, that's what my file manager does. So let's see how I did that. Let's go into form and let's see down here. Let's shut this down. So if I go into uh, the events panel for list view, and this is the function that executes. With some versions of .NET, .NET 4, for example, I could just use this bit of code here, process.start, giving the path to the file. You can see that that's not exactly what I've done in this current code, and I'll explain why. In .NET 6 and later, they don't like you just to start a process like that. Uh, you'll need to use this alternative way of doing it process.start and then all these arguments that you can see here. Now here I pass to the constructor of the start info class the path to the file I want to run or load and some arguments. Uh, these are passed to applications as command line arguments when it starts. The use shell execute argument here, the property determines whether or not the operating system shell should start a process to load or run the selected file. It turns out that the default value is true on .NET Framework, that's the older type of .NET applications, and it's false on the newer .NET Core platform. So here I just set it explicitly to true. The disk file string itself is the full path to the file, which I've built simply by combining the selected directory in the tree view with the selected file in the list view. I check that the file exists, then I call process.start to launch it. So let's try that out. This time I've navigated, as you can see, to the, um, this is actually the directory that contains the executable of the browser that I'm using at the moment, the one that I've just programmed, diskbrowser2.exe. Let's double click it and it pops a new instance of this program. It launches the program by double clicking it. And there you go. There's still plenty that can be done with this program. For one thing, it needs more error handling and recovery. For example, some system or hidden files may throw an exception if you try to run them. That needs to be handled. You can also try building much more functionality into the disk browser to copy, move, or delete files, for example. Look at the documentation of the directory info and file info classes for some methods and properties that can help you do that. I won't show you how to do it in this lesson for the simple reason that it's all too easy to delete important files accidentally, and I don't want to get the blame for that. So if you use those methods, you have to take great care. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to be alerted whenever I upload new videos.